Off Coaching the Fight Head. Got Shadow Man with me. And we're just doing this video today with Shadow Man because it's a, um, a late spring day. We're getting a lot of rain. Um, man thinks it's already summertime. He started summertime back there in June. But we're in July and we're still in the summertime here in 2021. But anyway, that ain't what I really wanted to talk to you guys about. What I really wanted to talk to you guys about is where we're at as far as our father's seven days of creation. You know what I mean? Where are we at on that calendar? And it shouldn't be any surprise that we're right here at day six. You know, at the end of day six, at the beginning of day six, there's maybe some debate on that. But we're right here at the transition period, get ready to go into day one, and that's how I feel about it. We're, we're, if you want to find out where we're at in the book of Revelation, you go to Revelation chapter 6, down there about verse 10, 11, 12, 13, something like that, where it's opening the sixth seal. The sixth seal is where we're at. We're actually waiting for the sixth seal to close. And that's what you hear about all of that earthquake and all of that stuff. And so that's what the topic of this video, when we say, where are we at? We are right there at the sixth seal. And you say, well, why is that important? Why is that important to know? Somebody's going to jump up and say, nobody knows the day or the hour. That's important to know because those are the events that we are actually waiting on that will we'll see it we'll we will see those you know unless we plan it on dying here real soon um we we will see those you know um that event let's go over revelation chapter six and read it. i'm gonna get out of the road all right 10 is talking about the fifth seal so you got these people who are given these white robes and they're they're crying yeah this this is going on for a while None of these seals, you know, once they open, do they ever close back. So it's still going on. Um, but what we're talking about is down in verse 12, where he says, And I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. So this is the day of the Lord. This is the great and dreadful day that we hear about. Notice that it's a part of the sixth seal. And we notice that the sixth seal has been opened since 1866. So we are here toward the, the transition point, I believe. He goes on today to say, And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. These are all pointing to the day of the Lord, right? And then even this next one goes with it. And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. These is the, what I'm saying are the next events that we have to look forward to. This is what's next. This this when, when you know, you hear a lot about the, the book of Revelation. You hear about. Um, two witnesses, you hear about um, uh, antichrists, you hear about lawless ones, you hear about uh, them making war against those that keep the commandments, you hear about the 1,260 days, you hear about at. So this is the purpose of this video is to say this is what we have next. Like I said, you hear about a lot of stuff now. There's supposed to be boils on people that don't keep the commandments. It's supposed to be um, all of these. Let, let me just scroll over there. We, we can get over to chapter 8 and we can start seeing about these things. Right there in verse 6, you see it says, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So notice this is in chapter 8. You have to go backwards to chapter 6 to get back over where we was talking about that stuff that already happened by now when we're looking at, at verse 8 but then it says and the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and a third part of the trees were burnt up and all green grass was burnt up this is actually the seven seal stuff when you're in chapter 8 scroll back up to verse 1 it says and when he had opened the seventh seal See, this comes after the sixth seal. That's why I'm saying the purpose of this video is, the, is just to say what we have next. And that's what we saw in chapter six is because this happens um, after that. He's talking about these trumpets. He says, and there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. So, you know, 
we don't know you know how when that is that's that's after the sixth seal and so what a lot of people will do and i don't mean to be preachy here but what a lot of people will do is we will ignore the events in chapter six scroll back over to chapter six we will ignore these events and focus on what we see over here in chapter eight all right the first angel had the fire had the um hail mixed with blood and the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And a third part of the sea became as blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life dried. And a third part of the sea were destroyed. Okay, so now we got this to worry about and when the trumpets start to blow. And the rest of them are here too. There's the third one. Talking about this wormwood and this water being made bitter. And you got the fourth one right there. Um, where the sun is actually changed and the moon is actually changed. This is the time in which we uh, find out that there is no more time. You can actually correlate this with the eighth day. The 8,000th year. Where we're at the 7,000th now. So, but my point is, is that these events are down the road. They're, 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 they're after check six. So we really need to be concentrating on six. And what is it talking about? It's talking about a great earthquake. So now if you think about this for a second, those people who want to focus on the Antichrist, which you read about in, in chapter 11, um, it's way on down there. You want to read about the, the um, um, two witnesses there in chapter 11 too. You know what I'm saying? They're skipping over this part here as if the, as if it's no big deal as if it's and it's really not it's really just a big bump in the road literally a bump in the road because it's an earthquake that's supposed to shake down every building on the planet this is and i don't want to sound like you know it's not that big a deal and say this is it but i'm saying this is it we got this global earthquake we can read about that over in matter of fact let's jump over there and read about that oh yeah we missed we said it Three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear, and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survive the chaos. You shall see the fulfillment of many prophecies. So this is what it's talking about when it's talking about that earthquake. This ain't no small earthquake. When it's talking about, you know, lands going on the waters. And you can look at maps and stuff that show, you know, how different parts of America will be underwater. Like the Mississippi River is supposed to get, you know, big as the ocean look like the way I read the scripture. I don't know much about oceans or whatever or the Mississippi River. But the way, you know, some of them diagrams from the U.S. Navy, they the ones roam up. The U.S. Navy, um, the ones that they predict will happen, you know, it, 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 you can understand what it means right here when it says three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear. Three quarters of the earth shall disappear, and one quarter only shall remain. Now, I used to think that this was talking about the whole continent going away, but it could be spare. It could be areas, you know. It could be where you still have a resemblance or a symbol symbol of the uh, continents, and um, and it still be land over there. Like it could be a place in Africa where, you know, they they are on high ground, so to speak. And that part of the land survives, you know, because of some divine will. And on that piece of property that does survive in Africa, there are um, these people who remained on that land. That land was a refuge from them. These are the people that survived the chaos. And the chaos is going to be the earthquake. You know, this earthquake is going to cause chaos. Could you imagine, you know, imagine an earthquake that shakes a building, a, a large city, and how the rest of the world comes to help. Okay, now imagine in that day when there is no um, people to come to help. You know, everybody's building is shaking down. That's what we're talking about when this, this earthquake is that everybody's building is shaking down. And people get a little bit nervous and some of them, you know, get a little bit combative and they like, well, so that means your, your house going to fall too. Yeah, that's what's the purpose of the tents. That's why the father had us learn how to live in tents. You know what I mean? T-E-N-T-S. We, we, we are ready for this earthquake because we keep the Feast of Tabernacles. 
so that's where he's talking about there was a great earthquake okay so that's part of the sixth seal and this is my point so we got this type of level of earthquake now after this earthquake humanity is going to survive there's going to be pockets of people this, these the, you know it's going to be these pockets of people who are in these places surviving off of the father he helps you he helps us with food clothing shelter all we got to do is understand that it, it comes uh, spiritually and we have to stay clean enough to where we can actually hear from an angel and then um so you will have these people to survive now all of that stuff in, in that's on down the road in chapters uh uh seven you see where it's talking about the um the hundred and forty four thousand men sealed yeah they they get sealed after the um the great earthquake you know it, it, it appears as though they're getting sealed now being sealed is actually part of the sixth seal so i'll take that back i'll take that back i had to correct myself that the um the, they're getting sealed now as part of the uh, six seal. Um, so that's what you see in seven. But no, no. What you really need to know here is that in chapter eight and verse one is when you see that they have opened. It says he opened the seventh seal so that's a difference the seventh seal is after the sixth seal now a lot of people don't want to get that because they only want to talk about the war you know there's a war that armageddon war, armageddon is is um um on down a few few verses down a few chapters down but back here so now look at this part where it says and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood so you have these things that are affecting the stars and stuff. Now, I'm trying to think where's a reference for this besides all over the scripture. It talks about how the um, sun is going to be darkened and the moon is going to turn to blood during the, during the day of the Lord. But what actually causes that? What, call, what makes that happen? I'm not sure what makes that happen. I don't know what he's talking about as far as i'm concerned he could even be talking spiritually here you know what i mean this six seal was a spiritual thing this great earthquake i don't know that that's spiritual i don't i wouldn't i wouldn't say that that one was spiritual i believe we're actually going to feel a little bit of shake in there but let's go on to verse 13 it says and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, let's come back to the third testament. And let me show you something over there. Yeah, this is down here in chapter 64. It looks like it's all the way down here in verse 38, where he says, My elements shall be unleashed and desolate the lands. The men of science will discover a new planet, and a rain of stars will illuminate your world. But this will not bring disasters to humanity but only to announce to men the coming of a new era. See, that's what don't wake people up. When they see this, like when you're back over there in Revelation chapter um, 6, and you look at what happens after they see this. Now, you see in verse 12 and 13 is where this happens. And look at verse 14. It's talking about the heavens departing like a scroll. Um and every mountain moved out of his places but look at verse 15 it says and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains so all of a sudden every man on the earth then hid itself on the rocks that's what it's trying to say here when it says every it's saying every, it's saying every man. It's not just a few people watching YouTube videos, I'm serious. Is you know, every man is going to rip because you got stuff coming out of the sky. How are you going to deny that? You know what I mean? How are you going to, and you got this earthquake. How are you going to deny that when the scripture told you it was going to happen and now it's happening? It's happening. You know, it ain't, it ain't that, you know, you done got over it. This stuff's still happening. But anyway, notice in verse 16, it says, And said to the mountains and the rocks, Follow us and hide us from the face 
of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of his lamb. So now, so this is every man all of a sudden realizing that the Lord is there. They're, and they're saying to hide us. The hiding. Every man is hiding. Every man is like Adam back there in um, the garden there where they are, they are all sitting there like Adam was when the father was calling him. We're doing it now. It's just that then stuff going to be coming out of the sky. It's going to be different then. And then look at what they said. These are every man here. Every man realizes verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able to stand? So notice this. Now, this you got to put this together. Is that the sixth seal, which is where we're at now, ends with this earthquake. And this other stuff that's described here in Revelation chapter 6. And uh, it, it's before chapter 7 and chapter 8. I keep telling, trying to tell people, you know, th those other events are on down the road. Um, I want to say even aliens and stuff is down the road. But, you know. I'll let them find the verses that say anything about aliens. Now, here, let's come back to this part right here where we're looking at verse 14, which says, And heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Now, I believe this is spiritual. Now, I believe a lot of this stuff is physical, but I believe this part right here is actually spiritual. So, for him to be saying right here, the heaven departed, I believe he's talking about um, the great awakening. When humanity wakes up, we're supposed to go through this change. Like uh, uh, Paul was talking about, where we're in a twinkling of an eye, we're actually going to change to this different kind of being, a spiritual being. A being where materialism doesn't have such a huge effect on us because spiritualism does have this huge effect. It's replacing this huge effect. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, this I believe is pointing back to what it was talking about up there with the earthquake. And let me th take you to the third test to show you what I mean. I'm coming all the way up here to chapter 55, which is called The Purification of the World and Humanity in the Judgment. My wife and I, we did a playlist on this entire chapter, uh, touching on each one of these verses. Um, go ahead, and we, it's been a long time. You know, might be able to even add some corrections and stuff to it if you check out that playlist. Um, maybe I can make it pop up for you somehow. But anyway, we're going to drop down here to verse 7. It says, When those chosen by me, Find themselves reunited round my law. Now we're going to take this real slowly. First of all, it's saying that those chosen by him. So these are his elect. These are the ones that he, these are the first fruits, I should say. Everybody understand the first fruits. When the first fruits find themselves reunited round the law. Remember that like the disciples, you know, the disciples had to actually learn from the Messiah. Well, that's the same way with us right now. We actually have to learn from the Messiah to, lay, to live within the law, just like they did. We have to learn how to live within the law. But it's saying when they, are re, when they find themselves reunited around the law, meaning that some time has transpired to where they're actually living within the law. Now, once these people, these people who have been chosen by him, once this time has transpired, whether it's 7 or 14 or 21 years, whatever it is, once, it's, once they find themselves reunited around his law, reunited around the law, that's the big thing. When he first chose them, they wasn't reuniting around the law, but some time has transpired, and now they are. When this happens, look what happens when this happens. The earth and the stars will be shaken, and in the sky there will be great signs. So here you have tying this whole earthquake to, you know, these 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 people here getting reunited around the law you know and then but notice that part right there where it says not only the earth is, is going to be shaken but it says and the stars will be shaken and I guess that's where the meteor shower comes from because it's shaking like a fig tree so there's your meteor shower the earth and the stars will be shaken so this is definitely talking about the day of the Lord here those two events it says and in the sky there will be signs there is your your moon being dark and your sun not giving her light those are those signs right here because once we see those signs we know it and some came to me and this is you know purely speculation but something came to me uh, yesterday I believe it was for my father that this um, sun being darkened 
could actually be the three and a half years of darkness that people talk about. The sun could actually go dark for three years. Imagine that. Almost four years. Three, three, almost four years we have no sunlight. You know what I mean? And the moon be, you know, a shade of red when we do get to see it. Like, stay red for three years. But anyway, there was those signs and it says, because at that instant, the voice of the divine spirit, okay? Now, the divine spirit, here we are talking about Elijah. Now we need to jump over to Daniel in chapter uh, 12. Um, to see what it's talking about right here. Daniel chapter 12 talks about this, this voice of the divine spirit. But this is also who you see in Matthew chapter 24. You see this in 1 Corinthians. You see this in... First Thessalonians, you see it in First Thessalonians. This is the same. That's this is this voice that it's talking about. Malachi, the book of Malachi, read the book of Malachi, a whole book, or just read uh, chapter four and chapter three. Read it backwards. If you didn't read the whole thing, read the book of Malachi backwards. Um chapter by chapter, starting with chapter four and then read chapter three and then chapter two and then chapter one. Just in case you don't make it. You know. When you start with the last few verses if you want to, you know, start with the last verse and work your way backwards read that book backwards but anyway this is this uh voice of the divine spirit this is michael this is the archangel michael he covers and he all those who keep the law he fights for those who keep the law this is why the bible tell you turn the other cheek you know what i'm saying i'm trying to fight back why because first of all you're gonna get in trouble if you do now you're gonna deserve a butt whooping for the butt whooping you put on that person but secondly you got this angel that's actually supposed to do your fighting for you and to actually do any fighting on your own shows a lack of faith it's a demonstration of a lack of faith well guys i just wanted to share that with you something that was on my heart and i thought maybe you guys could benefit from it too i mean there's a lot going on in the book of revelation but wouldn't it be nice to know exactly what we are expecting? Well, I believe if we start to get the chronology right, we'll see the order of events. And it'll be easily recognized that we're waiting for these events in Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 14 next. And with that understanding, I believe it's clear how the feast days and obedience to the law would actually help us to survive those events. And with that, I'm going to say shalom.